Uh, my name is Dr. Bellucci, I'm from Italy, and I have the honor today of uh, uh, moderating this uh, uh, webinar. The webinar name is Unique Sinusoidal Vision Technology Acriva Trinova, and it's organized by VSY Biotechnology. This company is organizing global webinar sessions to continue sharing clinical experience in this period where meetings cannot be held and we have worldwide participation at the moment. All participants can send their questions. Please do so to organize the discussion we will have at the end of the presentations. And at the end, these questions will be discussed with Dr. Tomita, who is our speaker today. Uh, I think everybody of us knows Dr. Tomita for his uh, great work in cataract and refractive surgery. Dr. Minoru uh, Tomita is the medical director of Tomita Minoru Eye Clinic in Ginza, Japan, in Tokyo. The title of the presentation today is Clinical Performance of the New Generation Trifocal IOL. Please welcome Dr. Tomita and you can start your presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Berich. So uh, thank you for inviting the decisions today. Everyone is fighting with coronavirus in their own countries. So even in Japan, coronavirus patients is increased a lot. And then so, you know, my practice patient, I still doing a little bit of surgeries, but the practice patient is is a lot. So, but, you know, Japan, the Japanese government asking to the, you know, people stay home, but it's not the still not lockdown. So they are, you know, people is going to the company and most of people stay in the, you know, by using the website, they are staying and working homes, but so in the hospital and also some people are working. And then, you know, we have to, you know, together, be together and fight with this virus and then we can see the goals and then, and then yeah, futures. I hope for that. But in, in this time, we can studies and together and the, like uh, new technologies. Today, I'm going to talk about the clinical performance of new generation that I hope I was. So I am a medical director in the um, eye clinic in Ginza, Tokyo, and I talk about the clinical performance of the new generation that I hope I was now. Uh, this lens is a very unique, and then so fast type of change the lens. And then before talking about that, I want to introduce. Uh, I want to talk about traditional IOLs, trihook IOLs. I implanted a lot of fine visions. I also implanted a lot of optics, uh, like a, you know traditional refractive lens. So that this, you know, lens has some. Because also many people is telling to me the around careers also they cannot see the very well that with the dim right and then that thing is decreasing in the past the night vision problem and the between the 15 to 20 percent of right cross and the rear vision at the transition zones around the career problem at night. This is a complication or a merit for the tradition I hope for IOLs. And then, oh, and this is a slide to show the both. You know, this blue right is a traditional IOS, and then red right is new sensor lens patterns. And these are called to the near vision to intermediate vision from the intermediate vision to far vision have been the highly improved, and then frequency of glass use has been dramatically reduced at the post rate, able to treat the cataract and the breast at the same time. We can you know, uh, you can see here, so the red, red is for the traditional, uh, blue, blue line is traditional.
Iowa, uh, Torreya Hocker, Iowa. So you can see distance, uh, intermediate, and also years. So uh, the red right is the noble red. We can uh, we can provide it to the patient, you know, uh, simultaneously. We, we we don't we, we don't have any loss in the, between the distance of the near the intermediate and the intermediate years. So shield lens vision we can provide it to the patients. And the balance right in the distributions, the lighter distribution balance with far vision is forty one percent in the noble red. Intermediate vision to the third person and the near vision to the next person. Unique refractive zone allocated right to the all three visions with the losing the right distributions. Great contrast sensitivity even under the low right condition. You can show the slide like this. So I remember the, my, my my is So this lens is sensorial lens. Uh, the Nova lens is a new model of the Toyoka lens with the sensorial patterns, uh, you know, with head off. It has the most focus. focus. And the sensorial lens has a top unique ring, which creates the highest light transmission and the uh, optimal light distribution through the optical diameters. You can see here, so the Nova lens lose only the 8%, 22% right go to the retina. But the fine vision is 40% and uh, lose right, and the 86% going to the retinas, at least as 40% lose. And also, fine optics, 12% lose, and the 88% going to the retinas. And the natural vision is 35 years old, and only 5% loss, and the 95% going to the retinas. So, almost same as that in the um, noble lens, only the 8% light loss. And very good for um, result compared to the other street by Hopper lenses. And the since the other Hopper IOS, better contrast sensitivities, dynamic visual performance, or distance, suitable for the micro incision cataract surgery, and the less usage glass, glass is a, a cost of credit. And the holdover single piece with uh, combination of the hydrophobic and the hydrophobic acrylic. Polymers. So you can say this slide, uh, US Air Force Resolution Target is it's very good result. You can see in the, in the turnover lens, we can see the very clear so the distance vision, intermediate, and the news. But then the IOL fine visions, distance is good, but the intermediate is uh, very waxy and a little bit, you know, blurred. And the near vision also a little bit rare. And then, so this went at least rates, and the distance is good, and the intermediate little greers, and the near also greers compared to the with the difference. And the IRC in the, with the hot peak conditions, distance is good, and the intermediate little greers and the near greers. Almost other three traditional um, uh, trihocker IORs, almost same result. But in the turnover lens is much more clear. And then with, uh, with dim light conditions. So then it's also, you know, the turnover lens, even distance, intermediate, near is almost clear. But in other lenses, IOLA, physio, at the distance is a little good, but the intermediate, near is very uh, clear. And then so uh, as a IOS B is at least is also the same result. And the IOLC optics also distance, intermediate, near. Distance is a little good, but the uh, intermediate and the near is uh, very weird. So compared to this, if we compare these four lenses, the noble lens is the best quality of the vision so that it is in the dim right. So I think that the noble lens, uh, if we use uh, the toric lens, we have to move the lens, it's very easy. So uh, design, uh, acrylic of toric plate design provided under excellent abilities and the uh, rotational flexibility by uh, allowing the lens to rotate in both directions during the operation. So from here, I want to share my result. So we implanted over the 400 
uh, Nova iOS to the 400 eyes. So Aquila Penmore Lens is a new model to help with sensorial pattern and it has a depth of focus to avoid the clinical outcome of Aquila Penmore Lens. We analyze the clinical outcome of Penmore Lenses. So this study is included 231 eyes were implanted with Aquila Penmore Lens from the February 2018 to the March 2019. Patient mean age was six years old, and the preoperative angle the distance visibility was 2200. Correct distance visibility was 2025. And correct near visibility was J11, and the correct near visibility was J4. Preoperative MRFC was minus 5.7 diopters. All surgery were used flux uh, with uh, the LDV Z8 and the Centurion Alcon. So the, this is my video. After I removed the cataract, we I implanted uh, the neural lens to the patient's eyes. It's very easy to smooth the implanted. I use a uh, two millimeter incisions for these patients, and after uh, you know uh, implanted in the back, it's very easy to move it also. Usually, I washing the anterior side and also in the back side of the lenses, of course. So this is the result. Post-operative six months, uncork the distance visuality, correct the distance visuality, uncork the near visuality, uncork the near visuality, correct the near visuality, and uncork the intermediate visualities were. 2016, the angle the distance, distance visual acuities. 2016, the correct the distance visual acuities. And the angle the near visual acuities was J2. Angle the intermediate visual was uh, 2020. The correct the near visual acuity was J1. Angle the intermediate visual was 2020. Post operative MRS was. 0.33 diopters, and then no interoperative or postoperative complication observed. There was a significant improvement in the data in the postoperative six months. You can see here, before surgery, minus six diopters, and then one month, the 0.15 diopters, three months, 0.25 diopters, six months, and then 0.33 diopters. So this is a distance visual activity result. The main angle, the distance visual activity was significantly improved from the preoperative 0.1 in, uh, to the, uh, I think it's at six months, 2016, over the 2020 years, at six months postoperatively. It's improved very much. And the uncorrected intermediate visual activity was preoperatively, it's less than 0.2, it's mean uh, from to the Point nine after six months. So the over 20, 25 at six months possibly intermediate vision it was improved. The uncorrected the near visual activities mean uncorrected near visual activities significantly improved from the preoperative 1.5 or less than 0.2 to the 0.8 at six months. It's J2, it's a very good result. So uh, everyone is interested in our um, contrast sensitivity downs. I, uh, it's very difficult to compare before surgery and after surgery because they have a cataract. That's why I compare the contrast sensitivity with the monofocal IOL buses in the Tenova lens. Uh, this is a hotopic condition. Spermeter gray or hotopic vision was uh, almost same, no significant difference with monofocal lens and turnover lens. Parameter gray scotopic vision, uh, also it's no significant difference. So no significant difference in the monofocal and the turnover IORs with the uh, parameters uh, gray halo and test. And there are also uh, contrast sensitivity monofocal buses and the IORs, scotopic vision. And also, we didn't have any significant difference with the monofocal and the turnover IORs. The good result. The patient has functions. 49% um, patient is very high satisfied, and the 40, 47% of patients have very high satisfied. And the 45% patient is satisfied. It's only 8% patient is not satisfied. 
this thing is so no, we patient has a, a why we have a eight percent not dissatisfaction patients so most of patient is very high expectations we have surgeries uh, but you know their their retina is already 70 years old 80 years 80 years old and they have a retina already the aging so that's why even very good refractions, almost parallel, some patients can see the only the 0 0.8 in the distance and 0 0.7 years. Even monohocal lens, I believe it's the same, same result, even with monohocal and the leading glasses, I think it's a, almost the same result. But, you know, the patient is, is want to see back to the 20 years old, it's, but it's impossible. Right, so that's why the some patient is uh, have a dissatisfaction. But most of patient is very high, high, high you know, satisfaction. Uh, last week I did uh, one patient uh, after electric surgeries, so they have vision 1.24 distance, and then they're 2020 day one, the next day. So they, she said that they're very, you know, satisfied. She said that the very thank you very much to Dr. Tomita is very happy with the Nova lenses. So no harm and grayer, she said, even next days. So conclusions, the clinical outcome of the Nova lens shows a significant improvement in uncle the distance visual activities, uncle the near visual activities, and um, uncle the intermediate vision. This study shows that in studied patterns, the end of the lens was safe and effective for the cancer patients. 92% patients are satisfied with the visions after surgeries. The result of constant sensitivity was not significant difference with on hogger IOLs. Um, this result shows that we don't need to care about how on greers with turnvalent like other microhocker IOLs. Thank you very much. I think now we can uh, start the discussion section. And yes. I would like to start with uh, some questions and then I will read uh, questions from the audience because I have a question of, of my own. It is, uh, and this this, you said you, are, uh, you were using other types of trifocal lenses. What uh, made uh, you choose to implant Trinova over other IOLs? Mm -hmm. So nine years ago, I was a first surgeon for the fine vision. I, bro I brought the fine vision technology to Japan. I was first surgeon in Japan for fine vision. But, and I implanted 2,000 eyes for fine visions from now uh, in my clinic. But, uh, so fine vision patients, is very good result. Uh, but they said, you know, with the dim light, they can see the, they cannot see the near very well. They have some barriers, etc. Like so, uh, if patient want to see the uh, very well with the dim light, or they want to see the very, they don't like the hollow barriers because you know, if we implant the high -high visions or the other refractive lenses. You know, hollow gray and um, some rare in the right is they coming 100%. But I, I talk, I discuss with my patient if they don't like this, so I implanted the number right. Thank you. Uh, we have now several questions from the floor, and one uh, is regarding the technology of the IOL. And I, I will, uh, I will read this question, although. Um, this might be pertaining to the producers. A question is, does it have any special feature in terms of design, the central ring of the lens, it means, um, to extend the range of vision? Basically, as far as, far as I understood is how this lens works. It's still a diffractive pattern, although obtained by sinusoidal grating. Probably it is a diffractive pattern, although obtained through a sinusoidal grating that is limiting uh, glare and halo. Mm. So that's my, that is my, that's my opinion. 
So my opinion, this lens effect is very, I think it's 50% by, or over 50% because of the Adolf effect. So, and then they are, of course, they have powers near for plus three adapters in the middle plus seven five, which like this. But, so most of the effect is coming to, from the Adolf because of the, because of inside the pupils, you know, almost most parts being there. So that's why I believe the Adolf effect is most important of these lenses. And then we have uh, uh, two questions uh, from Dr. Uh, Hartog. And is, uh, is the IOL, uh, first one is, is the IOL available in a toric uh, correction? Is it toric? I think yes. And the second question from this uh, um, doctor is, uh, what is for you intermediate focal point? At what distance did you measure it? 60 centimeters or 80 centimeters? Can you tell us something about? So even 68 centimeters, 80 centimeters is very good for this probably the same for this lenses. I, I tried already. But at what at what uh, at what distance did you measure the intermediate vision? Was it 60, 80, 70 in, in your in your patients? So my patient is uh, intermediate 70, 70 centimeters. 70, 70, yes. thank you. And then there is another question. Um, since uh, um, the, 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 loss, the, light, the loss of light is only 8%, mm -hmm. uh, would you use this lens in eyes with mild macular pathology, such as grade one, two macular pucker or dry IMD without significant changes of the ellipsoid zone at the OCT? Do you have any experience about that? So I have a experience. Uh, if they have a macular holes, I, I, I never do the uh, surgeries. I have to tell the patient going to the retina specialist and then treat it first. And then so retina specialist is implanted the monohocal lens maybe. But if they have uh, some little bit of ERM in the, or a small macular generations, the time I can talk with patient and if patient agree to the result, you have some disease, little bit of disease in the, in the, you know, in the macros. But you are still, you, you are visual acuity, maybe it's so uh, still functional. Even little bit you have a ERM, but we can try to the uh, what you have if you, uh, if result is not good, you have to have uh, some literal surgery to remove the ERM like this. So uh, if patient is agree that, I think it's possible to implant it this and to the, even they have uh, some ERM as either with other generations. I, so I, 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 I have several patients <clears throat> with the ERM. Some patients have very good result. This has a 2020, 2016, that day one years, Maybe the 40% or 30% resorted like this. But the some patient is in the resort is not good. I send it to the retina specialist after surgery. I do, I do agree. I also uh, share your view. I, I wait for the permission of the retina specialist. However, uh, in few occasions, I regret not having implanted in a, in, in a multifocal, a trinova. Uh, there is another question. Um, the question is um, uh, from uh, Dr. Sai, uh, and is 8% of the patients seems not to be satisfied. Um, what's your experience after um, bilateral, simultaneous bilateral surgery or after uh, unilateral surgery? He says, that after the first eye, patients may be disappointed and their disappointment goes away after second eye surgery. Uh, what, what, what is your approach? So, you know, I, I, I believe it. Um, if we can have a refractive surgery after surgery, uh, after surgeries, maybe the 99% patients become 
I mean, so some patient is become plus five diapters, plus one diapter after surgery, or, or you know, minus five diapters after surgeries. So most of patient is unsatisfied the result uh, reason is refractive errors, you know. So I can I, I, I'm a refractive surgeon. I, I, I just I can tell to the patient, I can improve you are you know unsatisfied with five minutes. You know, I can do basic, I can do ERPs, I can treat it your refractive errors. So most of patients is after these surgeries. No, no complications, you know. So no, 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 no unsatisfied, very satisfied. That's why yes. I, I, I usually implanted one eye after one week. I implant the other eyes. Thank you. And then, then, then I, let me pose a personal question before going to the floor again. And my question is. Would you implant this lens uh, after LASIK, after refractive surgery, after SMILE, in the future, of course? Mm -hmm. uh, what's your, your opinion and what formula are you using? So, I, I, I'm using the ASGRS. I'm going to the ASGRS in the website and I check the several calculations. <laughs> they have uh, many patterns and I, I, I check it with average. But, uh, if we, they have a uh, before surgery, before LASIK letters, we can go into the very good result. And, but if they don't have any, you know, uh, preoperative LASIK preoperative letters, because LASIK center is already gone, they close it, so they cannot get it. Some patients had a LASIK study in US 30 years ago. But they, that they cannot get it, any data. So that my, the times I told to the patients, so I, maybe the ten percent, twenty percent you needed, uh, you know, after surgeries. And after they, they agree, I can do the other surgery. So most, if they have a preoperative data, the ninety-five percent patient is very good result. The calculation is Marie or some mustard. Is it by from the ACRS website? I, I get it. Also, then the star also they have some calculation inside. There is another question about the the target refraction after surgery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you uh, aim uh, at a slight myopia, a slight hyperopia, at mm -hmm. perfect emetropia? What's what's mm -hmm. your approach? So. Yeah, it's very good, very good, you know, patients. So you can go to the APSCRS website, APSCRS website, and then, so they have a very good calculations. So we, I think in the, you know, I, all patients I check with the APSCRS uh, website, and then we calculated the, the lens letters. It's very helpful for the, this kind of patients. You know, APSCRS letters, if high myopia patient, they can a little bit with the minus. And the uh, high myopia patient, they get a little bit of plus. They automatically they can do it. Thank you. And now there is a question from uh, UK. And the question is, uh, when you are uh, planning bilateral implantation, uh, do you implant first the non-dominant eye or the dominant eye? What's, what's your suggestion? I, I don't care. I don't care dominant and, and non-dominant eyes. You don't believe in uh, dominant Yes. Heart attack or severe. I, I do the surgery the first with the severe cataract first. Uh, and thank you. And the other question is, um, the eight percent who were not satisfied apparently were in their seventies and eighties. Uh, does this mean that this lens is not appropriate for those uh, age groups, or uh, you suggest there is another another reason for them to be uh, partially satisfied? So it's the 
you know, uh, one patient is uh, last week coming, the one patient is coming to me. They had a mature, mature, mature cataract before surgery. That patient asked me to implant the telenovel lens. And I did the surgery, then the surgery is success. It's no complication, but patient distance vision is 0 0.7 for distance. Before surgery, of course, is nothing. The, almost right because of the much cataract. But after surgery, there was seven, the patient is unsatisfied very much. They, he angry to me, but if patient added the 0.75 doctors, their vision become 1.5 for distance. That's why I told you, I can give you the free refractive surgery for, for your eyes, 0.75, I can correct it. And then, so that thing is, as such a patient is, most of patient has a, some, just a little bit of refractive errors. We can adjust it by refractive surgeries. So thank you. And we know that this is a great lens and we have many questions from the floor. Another is, what is the biggest benefit of sinusoidal surface? I think it's the visual quality. Quality of vision. Think? Quality of vision. So for uh, a public patient, uh, last month I implanted 300 eyes. For last month, or one month, I implanted 300 optics last month. Because Japanese insurance is free for the optics last month. That's why I implanted 300 patients. But many patients told me they have uh, some dim light. Uh, uh, near vision is a little bit become doubles. See, not years, near vision. So, renewable lens is very good. But even near vision is very clear because of the patterns, I believe so. Thank you. And uh, do you use this lens for refractive lens exchange as well? Uh, I saw your patients are quite young and their pre-operative corrected vision is quite good. So maybe mm -hmm. there are uh, refractive lens exchange cases in, mm -hmm. uh, in, among your patients. So what is your approach and can you share with us one particular case if you have it? So um, but, uh, it's not so not clear lenses. They, they can see the 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 before such a risk, uncorrected the distance visions. So it's a small cataract, the very tiny cataract, it's, I can do it. So I, I don't do just for clear lenses. It's very rare cases for me. Uh, that, that's a, a, a little bit more common for me, uh, maybe because of the particular area I'm, I'm working with. Um, so, uh, is there any patient selection on your side? Do you select patients for ACRIVA or you select patients not to receive in ACRIVA and ACRIVA is your standard lens? What's your approach? So what's my approach is ACRIVA lens has a very high lens because ACRIVA lens has a zero power also. Our optics or fine vision, they have until six factors. Plus six doctors. So Acrivo lens, if they have a, you know, in Japan, we have a lot of high myopia patients, you know, some patient doesn't have lenses. So that time I, I, I told you the patient, you have a good lenses, good, good qualities, and then they have a lens, lens also like this. So uh, I'm, uh, so many patients is a high myopia patient choosing these lenses in my practice. And another, another question is regarding astigmatism. Uh, for the initial astigmatism, would you recommend implanting a Trinova Toric IOL? Mm -hmm. So, over my, minus one diopters, catmetry uh, is astigmatism. That time I recommended to the patient it, uh, implanted the Toric lenses. Less than one after I corrected with LRI. 
uh, that's it. And what the uh, Acriva is available up to 10 cylinder uh, value. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's a very high astigmatism mm -hmm. power. Um, yeah. So uh, what, what can you tell us, uh, did you, uh, did you try any high cylindrical power lens yeah. in your practice? Yes, I, my, my practice, I'm also doing the many crab holes treatment also. So even for crab, I, I treated the corneal ring and then cross thinking before that. After six months, the patient, one patient, they have a minus of the cylinders. I implanted this acrylic uh, lenses, this patient, as a patient result is very good, 0.8 for the uncle that is suspicious of okay, it's 0.8. It's a very good result. Thank you. Now we have other, uh, other questions uh, from the floor. And, uh, um, and this is very interesting from uh, uh, Peter Lloyd Malari, and this, have you combined your trifocal Acriva with other brands of uh, uh, trifocal lenses or other lenses in the contralateral eye? So mix and match. Uh, 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 you know, I, I personally don't perform mix and match. Uh, patients tend to blame one of the two eyes. What's yeah, yeah, your experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So last month, this is a very good question. Last month, I had, uh, I told you, I implanted the uh, power of this 300 eyes. And the two patients from the, of the 300, the patient told me that after one month, one week, I don't want to implant this lenses, you know, because of hard one degrees, it's not good result for them. Most of the patient is very good result, even power of but so this patient doesn't like it. They don't want to change the lenses. And I asked them to change the noble lens. So they said, well, one lens is the noble, the one lens is pyotics. It's much better than the noble lens compared to the pyotics lens. When they asked me to the, change to the pyotics to the noble lenses, I said it. But the pyotics lens also, this transmission 1.5, and yet the 0.8, they do. It's no problem. You know, you have to stay six months. If, you know, they, their brain will accept it. So, you know, some patients I have, a, some, the patient is one after two, three months, they used to the distribution. It's, so one month, the result is uh, up when he comes. Thank you. Uh, I think probably the last question uh, from Dr. Motion, uh, he probably didn't pick up the, you said, but can you repeat the benefits over other trifocals? Benefit in the, the noble lens compared to the other lenses? Yes, to other trifocals. So uh, I think it's uh, for, so, uh, seamless resolutions. They can say that uh, near to the distance also. Uh, some patient is a for five vision patient. They can see, they can see, 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters, and 30, 30 centimeters is good, but it, uh, 50 centimeters, 50 centimeters is not good, he said. But, uh, you know, the normal end, they can see that over 40, 40 centimeters, we can see that everything, you know, that's, that I'm getting to the patient. So this is a seamless vision. Yes. Uh, yes well, yes. Uh, Dr. Tomita, I think that we, uh, we finished our time today and uh -huh. me, myself uh, and the floor for uh, we we got many questions and we couldn't give room to uh, everybody sorry for that we thank uh -huh. you for being with us today we thank, thank WSY for having organized this very successful webinar we thank all the participants and uh, hello to the next uh, webinar minoru take care stay take safe care. Take care. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. bye 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 bye